The following is a paid program. The content is provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership are not responsible for the content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. And now, the host of the Team Martek Hour, Joe Martek. I, I actually cut every all my hair off the other day a little bit too short because the comb over was covering up a bit of the spot up here. Yeah, you look like you got like a reverse mohawk up there, Joe. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you what, it's getting thinner. It's, you know, Dan, it's one of the perks no. you got. You would look Here's good, the question. Did you cut your own hair? I'd look good, bald and shiny. Did That's you cut right. your own hair? Yeah. Well, we <laughs> That's the problem. Go to the barber. No, no, no. You know, I tell you, there's two things in the world that I that I really can't. Here's stand. a barber shop, Jensen Beach. They don't even know, have a phone. Have you not, ever been there? The place is not a good awesome. barber shop person. Yeah, I am not. Uh, jewelry design center. Yeah. I got my electric thing with the measuring things, and uh-huh. you can trim we it. We can tell. <laughs> <laughs> See. <laughs> well, if if you haven't noticed, I'm not out here to impress you with my intelligence. Yeah. You have that okay. radio face. Too. I got that radio. <laughs> so who got your hair? Three four zero fifteen ninety. Three four zero fifteen ninety. This is the Dan and Joe Show, also called the Team Martech Hour. Um, the reason it's the Dan and Joe Show because ninety percent of the time there we're, no we're the only members of the team that show. So back in ought four, Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, Greg Fasula, attorney, and Joe Martech, financial advisor, said, "Let's start doing a radio show so we can help people." With like a quest- public service show, and it really has been, and, and 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 I tell you, the greatest impact is when we actually uh, help somebody with something that they had a problem with. But because of in our group around 200 years of combined experience, a whole mostly yours, Joseph. Mostly mine. Now it's 200. <laughs> well, when I add up all six members, it's about 200 years. Rub it in. Rub it in, Joe. Rub it in. I know. I know. Dan's got We're 100. 100 Dan's got 104 of them. <laughs> Some <laughs> we, days. No, we we like count it. mileage rather than. That's right. Yeah. Mileage. Right. <laughs> you know, it's it's like the, uh, it's like the, uh, the attorney. Uh, speaking, speaking of, of holy mackerel. The, the three Mouseketeers are all here at one time. Greg Fasula, attorney, Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, and Now I'm going to have to try to fix that mic, that camera. <laughs> now we got to fix. No, all three of us are in. Perfect. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Look at it. Oh. Good. Uh, this look, is, and it looks all, like see no again, evil, hear no frame. evil, speak no oh, evil yeah. up there. Which one? <laughs> I do this. And yeah, you do this. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were just talking about how much experience our group has, Greg. Quite a bit. And it's about 200 years, but that kind of reminds me of the attorney joke. 200 years. Which one of the many attorney oh, jokes Well, is that? About, the, about the attorney that the died joke? and showed up in heaven. Yeah, I think I've heard that you one. You think you've heard that one? <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead and go tell ahead. it, Joe. I've yeah, got to finish it now. Yeah, you have to. So what happens is there's 100 angels on each side of a red carpet. Right. With their horns up in the air, blaring away. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the carpet stands God and St. Peter when they got their arms out and they're beaming. And this attorney kind of looks Italian and maybe in his 40s, <laughs> maybe. Tall. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Bald, you know. Anyway, he walks he's down. there a little premature then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he walks down the, the carpet and looks at God and St. Peter. He says, wow, you do this for everybody? God says, no, my son, but not since Noah's anybody lived to be 200 years old. And he goes, what are you talking about? I'm 45 years old. I stepped out off the curb in front of a bus in New York, and I got run over by a truck, by a bus. And God looks at Peter and says, Pete, how in the world could you make that kind of mistake? And St. Peter says, it's absolutely no mistake. I went through every one of his timesheets. That man is 200 years old. Based on his <laughs> billing records. <laughs> Bob Bing, bada boom. I like it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, I will tell you something that that I thank God every day that I'm in Florida. Now I have gone to (laughs) thanking him twice a day because Because? I just did a week (laughs) in uh, um, the most abysmal weather that you can possibly find. Did you? Went to New York City. Mm. 
not this last weekend, but the weekend before, and okay. it was five degrees. Five degrees. It was five See, degrees. See, but they yeah. were having record cold, weren't they? Having record it cold. It makes yeah. no difference. No I was flight, there. That kind <laughs> of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. You chose to be there. And I chose to be there. Now, you th- see, you think I was intelligent, right? Well, you wanted to go to New York. <laughs> we we li- literally had a two week or two block radius from the hotel that we never went out of. Really, it was too cold to get to five. walk more than two. You know blocks? what? Five. Well, actually, we did walk up from Forty Fourth to. I think it's 59th or 60th to Rockefeller Center. Mm-hmm. Went into St. Peter's, mm. you know, which is our American biggest cathedral in in America. It's, yeah, it's yeah, magnificent. Right? No, is it St. Peter's? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I, St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's. That's, Patrick. that's called the Frost Pipe Zone, Joe. I knew it was, that it was two a blocks. It was two blocks, you know. So <laughs> and, then, and then we went over to Rockefeller <laughs> Center, and they still had the Christmas tree up. Did you go skating? No, What's I it? did that. That's what you normally do. It well, was last too time cold. I, 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 too cold. To last go time skating. I ended up on the ice, and they had to peel me off. And I, but you they, you weren't prepared. You didn't bring like warm clothes. Oh yeah. Yeah. But Greg. When's the last time no, you were in five degrees? Warm clothes, it's been a while. Yeah, that I mean, doesn't here, really really You help. really forget. Long time. When it's blowing 15, 20, and it's five degrees, I mean, yeah. i got to tell you something. You need once in a while to do this just to realize how lucky we are. Yeah, well, because you can't cover your face. And, you know, well, you, well don't you don't can, go, you gotta you move, then you can't you see. you got to move quickly. <laughs> move quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, I got, then I got real intelligent, and then we flew to Kansas City, Missouri, and... Uh, that got down to zero. Really? It was even colder? Yeah. There. yeah. And, 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 cold in the Midwest. But then yeah. wow. we, we had to drive a car back from Missouri to mm-hmm. Florida. That's a long drive. Joe. So that's a two-day drive. And everything was frozen. Did you, as you drove back, did you run across really lousy weather? <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Yeah. So we had this front come through that brought it down to zero, but it was through now. So, you know, when the front is through, you get that nice, crisp and right. sunshine and you get that black ice black ice, black ice. Yeah. <laughs> and so we followed the storm and we caught up with it in kentucky almost you weren't mm-hmm. done with it you almost were enjoying, a enjoying foot, that a storm. foot of snow right did you have to dig right. the car out well no i'm driving now because that's always fun and we're on the interstate and we're trying to make it to nashville tennessee mm-hmm. and we got within 50 miles but a tractor trailer and 10 cars decided to block the road mm-hmm and uh, so oh we sat gosh. for three hours. So then we backtracked, and now it's still snowing, which is good. And you realize how many restaurants are not open when it is snowing and nasty and late in the day? Because locals stay home. Marbles. And then, exactly. then you find a motel or a hotel to get into, but you can't get into it because the snow is so deep, it's covered up, and nobody's plowed. It was exciting. Well, it brought back wonderful memories. Uh-huh. You know, I was up in in Tallahassee the day it snowed up there. Oh yeah, right. un- unbelievable. People I mean, must have been was, freaking it out. Was pretty, pretty cold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, snow can be beautiful if you're sitting by a fireplace in a house mm-hmm. or postcards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Picture postcards. I can live without. <laughs> I'm just telling you what you need to do this once in a while just to appreciate how lucky we are. Yeah. I well, mean, we went. I went up to South Carolina, got the new baby, Emory yeah, Ann. Yeah. But it was like. 15 degrees yeah mm-hmm. that's cold so yeah but mm-hmm. that's cold. i was there for two days left nancy she's still up there and i'm back home well just remind me joe in september when i'm out there putting up shutters and i'm sweating and and dying out there in the heat and humidity let me just tell you see what i do when the hurricanes are coming mm-hmm. you know i i check the track and i take the boat and go the other direction <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. until it switches gears until it last year remember yes sir i, I was did. gonna go to fort myers and right that's yeah. where the storm went the so. whole state got covered last yeah year. boy big but they got it worse over there yeah, they yeah. Did. and the keys obviously. Yeah. well they had it coming right over us yeah, at one yeah. Point. yeah. yeah. we, we got the survive. rain though we got the water we got rain they got more wind but we got the rain yeah, yeah I, I was a little nervous I, i've been through a lot of storms right. here almost all my life but that Cat 5 kept coming closer yep. and yeah. closer. Yep. And I'm thinking, all right, it's going to calm down. But then it was coming right up through the center of the state. Yeah. Something. Right. It's going to hit that warm water in the Everglades. Yep. And mm-hmm. It's going to hit that warm water in Lake Okeechobee. And yep. it's going to reintensify. Mm-hmm. And it was too late for me to leave. Mm-hmm. That was like Wilma. Remember the storm that was supposed yes, to dissipate and it got bigger. Right. And it came up the middle of the state. Right. Anyway, thank you, Lord. I'm in Florida. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm cured. For a good long time. You know, Greg. Well, like I say, rem- remind me in September. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, see, I'm now looking just forward to going to the Bahamas the end of June for two weeks. That's my, my annual go away on the boat. So I'm thrilled with warm and heat. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not thrilled with hurricanes, 
But you know, those, and Dan, you've lived here your whole life. Pretty much. Um, luckily, and I mean, it's just pure luck, the, the major storms, I mean, the major destroying storms have just kind of not affected, especially the Treasure Coast or from Palm Beach County up. Well, you know, Joe, growing up in Florida, we, as a child, we prayed for hurricanes so there'd be no school. Right. And then in high school, we prayed for hurricanes so we'd go surfing. And right. then when we were young adults, we, we maybe didn't pray for them, but we looked forward to them so we could play poker and have fun and cookouts and stuff. But it wasn't until Andrew yeah. that this fear was brought into the system. Right. Now, I respect all storms. Yeah, Andrew but changed Andrew was something it else. It changed was... everything. So now when a thunderstorm leaves the coast of Africa, yeah. the weather channel starts to track it. Right. And and that's right. the scary thing because right. there's so Start many people. building up anxiety. Oh, the anxiety is terrible for people. Well, they're dying to name it. I mean, they're just dying yeah, to yeah. name it. And they'd mm -hmm. would and the they love to also burn through all the names if they well, could. Well, you know, I talked to a buddy of mine who's fairly well respected in the weather industry. He said he doesn't believe we have more storms. He said we have more technology now, so mm -hmm. we know when they become yeah. a storm, so that's why it appears like we're having more. Okay. Because in the past, unless that plane threw, flew right through it mm -hmm. and tested it, we never knew sure. it was and a hurricane those, or not. And those fish storms, the ones that come off and turn and just go north and stay mm -hmm. over the water the entire time, we wouldn't even know they existed. That's well, right. the biggest right. indicator to me is if you see Jim Cantori on the that's street. That's when you're yeah. in trouble. <laughs> now you know, <laughs> now you know, you know you're, you're really in the wrong right. place. Yeah. 340-1590, 340-1590, and we've got a caller who should be here, and he's probably got an excuse, and he's our, 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 our almost weekly guest, not a member of the team officially, but unofficially a member of the team. He tries to keep us on track. He Joe. tries to keep us on track, and he's a retired uh, uh, prosecuting attorney from the great state of Wisconsin, which I now understand is solid frozen. Let's call it this the Great White North. The Great White North. The great White and North. he's on the phone. Could this possibly be Alan Love? It is indeed. Uh, I thought that uh, you were going to be enjoying things away from Florida for two weeks. So uh, the reason I'm calling in, though, is I do have a question for Greg Fasula. Hi, Alan. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Here's my, here's my question. Greg, uh, with the passage of the new tax bill, mm -hmm. are there anything that people should do as far as looking at their uh, estate documents to make sure that they're up to date and they want to have done what they want to have done? I haven't really thought that much about that, Alan. I, I don't know... Um you know, I'm not really familiar with the law that much to to think that there would be. I don't. Didn't didn't they they did they increase the estate tax right. limitation? It's right. up from five and a half million to yeah seven and a half or something. What it is now, but it, but yeah, they raised it up some. Yeah, they did. But then the other side of the coin is I don't know what else would affect up in a state. Other than that, I mean. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Isn't the death tax still there? That's what he said. But well, that's what we're saying. It's been increased. It's just been increased. Yeah. yeah. Well, back some years ago, it was six seventy-five, Greg, when you and I started I know. fooling around. Five hundred thousand for each spouse. It was six seventy-five. Yeah. I, well, if I remember, now you're older than me, Dan, aren't you? Just mentally. Mentally. <laughs> so that that's when the A and B trusts were really a and B, popular. Big time. Really big popular time. because you could easily exceed that just by a home and some yeah. life insurance right. and, and an annuity yeah. or yeah. something yeah. like yeah. that. You, yeah. It, it was it was definitely a concern. A B meaning remember Alan, you remember those that was husband was A and the wife was B or vice versa and that called them mm -hmm. A B trust. So right. they'd have two and they split up the assets so they could pass more through. Wife is always A. It, wife it is depends always on a. who wears the pants, I think. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you reminded me about Hillary. <laughs> or who earned the money. <laughs> oh, there it comes right. a, No, it's exactly. who keep who keeps, who keeps the, the money. money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Other than that, Alan. But yeah, Alan. I mean, that really hasn't been that much of a concern. You know, it's it's clients that I've seen that exceed that ex state account uh, limit. It's is rare. Well, yeah, how about rare? This? And I haven't seen this as an employer. Do I? I haven't seen a new tax. You're supposed uh, to have out in that January. Says how much I'm supposed to withhold on my on my employees. It's supposed <laughs> to be out. It's supposed to be less, right? I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Where do I get it? Hmm. Well, it's supposed to be available. Quote. Available from who? Well, you, yeah. Who's really. your Who's your accountant? 
I'll call. I'll call. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, supposedly this was disseminated in the month of January. Now, this is only like the 17th. And so they said that the first paychecks that would be affected were in February, which is two weeks away. Oh, really? Well, my girls don't want a penny more taken out. and not, I'm not if, gonna, they can, if they can help it, right? That's right. Because I want to be able to say, hey, this is what we got you. Well, you're supposed to have, <laughs> tell them, go to work for Walmart. You get a check for a grand right away. Yeah, but not, that grant's not <laughs> worth it. <in> <laughs> well, look at all the companies. And, Alan, I don't know if how much you've paid attention to that, but quite a few companies have issued um, big bonuses and raised wages um, all because of this new tax act. Mm-hmm. That's just propaganda. I like well, that. You know, actually, propaganda. for some people, it's money in their pocket. Well, it is money, <laughs> Somebody but give propaganda. you $1,000, is that propaganda? You know, I, 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 I think... Ciao. Just, Joe, I think I think it shows the if you if you look at the uh, dichotomy of the dialogue uh, on the media, the fact that uh, it it was shocking to a lot of people that all of a sudden they were getting these bonuses, and uh, people had tears in their eyes. They were so happy, but by the same token, you've got uh, people like Nancy Pelosi saying this is chump change. Uh, uh, you know that. Well, that, she she runs her life on a much bigger budget. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and, it is Trump change to her. But a thousand dollars multiplied by maybe hundreds of thousands of employees, well, like it, with AT and T, yeah. it's it's not Trump yeah. change collectively. But I mean, even the working person who gets to keep maybe just a hundred dollars yeah. a month, right? It's which is what she was saying was chump change. No. How many times do you fill your d- gas tank with that? Yeah. Now I have expendable money. Maybe I'm going to go to a restaurant now. And that's more than two well, bottles Maybe of I'm going to run out and get the kids some new clothes. Yeah. And they've been wearing the old stuff. Well, Listen, she so wanted the, the, the middle class and the lower classes to get to get more and, and to be permanent, not temporary tax cuts like they are now. Let me just and tell you. Anytime you get more money in your pocket, you're happier. Well, of course. Who's, who's going to argue with that? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. So, hey, we have no but idea. But that doesn't mean that the, the – But the thing is, Greg, fair, they had eight years to do it. They didn't. And you have to remember that no tax cut and no tax increase is permanent. It's at the whim no and the thing. will of the sitting Congress, yep. sitting yep. Senate, and that's the President. True. So yeah, that's while true. people say, hey, it's not permanent, don't kid yourself. Don't kid. Yeah. Well, you, know, you know it's going to change because the deficit is well, going to increase so every, much. Well, everything changes. Nothing stays the same. So, hey, listen, it's going to be a very interesting year because as gross domestic product exceeds 3%, we're going to see a few liberals starting to eat some crow. Well, I doubt it because look at the <laughs> look at the economy when Obama took over. It was it was recession type. Economy. No kidding. So so look at the economy when when Trump took over. It was it was pretty much starting, booming. Starting to come back. Starting to no, come back. But now, back. yeah, but look at the confidence. Oh there was God. no confidence. I mean, big big money well, people were holding on to their the money. Bottom, the we, bottom line is this: whoever is sitting in that seat is gets gonna, the glory. And yeah. gets the blame. That's what they don't do. say. Oh, it's all because of what happened before. No, no. Hey, listen, if it would have gone just the opposite, there's no way he, you, you would have said, well, you know, he took a great thing and screwed it all up, but it was Obama's fault. No, yeah, that's you, true. The, the that's winner, yeah, the that's winner true. gets the praise and the winner gets well, all look that's at true. the blame. I mean, yep. the, look at the, under the month that Obama took over, we lost 800,000 jobs. Just the month that he Do you he think took it was over. because when, he was taken over? Within a year, we were gaining. Well, let me tell you something. That was, I don't, and no wonder I don't like him. He, he fired me. <laughs> 800,000 of us were out of work instantly. Yeah. Anyway. Actually. But I do know this. Look at under Clinton, what a great, at, you know, that the very, very prosperous times. Right. But you got to give the guy credit because he was on the point. Right. Now, and and be- I didn't care for, for Clinton as, as some of the things he did, but I always gave him credit for the good and the bad that happened during his administration. Exactly. That's and it. I got a lot of friends who went to their grave hating him. Yep. And I would say, hey, listen, you got to give the man his due for while he was there. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Exactly. 340-1590. Alan, what other topics do we have? Otherwise, we got a liberal sitting here. You know, I want to pick a on moderate, him. moderate, moderate, moderate liberal. <laughs> moderate. Well, you know, th- th- there's there's nothing wrong uh, with with liberals. I have nothing against liberals, but. What I do have you know, again, you, what I love what I love is the word you always got to start with but at the end of it like <laughs> now don't take you. don't take this personally but but you're but, ugly that 
that, that's something I learned when I was in the DA's office in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, arguing Milwaukee, to a jury, right? Where 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 you'd say uh, where you'd say. I'm not going to charge you with a fam- uh, felony, but but, but. I'm charge you with two misdemeanors. But you'll be in jail for at least ten years. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, what 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 I what I was going to say is there's nothing wrong with liberals. The, the thing that's wrong is that uh, uh, we uh, don't talk to each other anymore. We we don't listen to the other person and try and either find middle ground or find out why That's they true. feel the way they do. And That's true, about, uh, Well, wait a minute. About, Two weeks ago or th- on Thursday, Trump had a meeting with everybody, with an open meeting with the press there and all, and everybody, right, got, al- everybody got along famously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, but, <laughs> but but it doesn't always think Wasn't that. it a bit awkward? I think, I I think it was extremely awkward. The key was this. Because nobody liked that. Nobody liked the fact that he left the media in, the whole thing. One of the least reported meetings ever, but it was all recorded and Mm -hmm. was played on conservative radio over and over again. And I mean, it was a couple of hours, but... And the no, media. That's why I missed it. You missed it. We figured. It was on t- it, no, it was on TV too. They carried it on TV. Yeah, they came. Yeah. Rush had it on, and Glenn Beck mm-hmm. had it on, and Hannity had mm-hmm. it on. You know, I'm just helping you, Greg. You know, yeah, okay. yeah. Alan, the, the uh, are you mind gonna, control people? Are we going to see you at four o'clock? <laughs> you are. All right, my uh, man. Anyway, thank you for the time. I'll see you later. All right, have All a right, good Alan. one. All right, Alan. Because we wouldn't mention our four o'clock show, 89.9 no. FM. WCNO. We don't talk about that here. <laughs> shameless, shameless. Three four zero fifteen ninety. So back in aught four, Greg Fasula, Dan Warren, Joe Martek started doing these shows because it was a pretty simple thing. Joe Martek, financial advisor, lots of clients. I don't know the answers to a lot of questions, especially when insurance became a monster subject. And it still changes, Joe. And it's constantly a monster subject. But after Andrew, it, it just it just fested. I mean, it just got worse and worse, and then. Dan, now I'm going to toot your horn just a little bit. You've only been in business 150 years, I think, by Seems actual like hours, right? But 30 billing hours. Dog years. 30, billing hours. Billing hours. <laughs> Dog years. Is it 38 or 39? Uh, it's about. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is, as an independent, this is the big word, independent, independent, independent. Dan and I both grew up in the captive insurance business. I work for a company called Farmers, which is a great company. And Dan worked for Nationwide, which is a great company. And, and you know, Joe, I, I sell Farmers products. I sell Nationwide products. But back then, we were not allowed to do such things. No. But there was one exception. When we were a captive, if we had a client that we could not fill with our captive company, we were allowed to go outside. But every time we go outside, the companies would say, oh, your farmers or your nation, no, you're only giving us your leftovers. Pretty much. So right. they, they didn't like us. Now, when the independent agent became critical, is especially after Hurricane Andrew hit, because it put 10, 12, 13 insurance companies out of business. Put several of them out. And the independent or the captive had one company to put his homeowner business with, and when they came along, the captive company said, okay, we're lopping off half of your book of business, non-renewing them or double-tripling the rate. They did all the above. Then the poor guy that works for that captive company, the client looks at him and says, you're a bum. Um, Guilt by association, Joe. Guilt by, yep, that's it. So then Dan, prior or at about that time, became independent, and now with pushing 100 companies under your umbrella, in my not too humble opinion, you are the premier independent insurance agent on the Treasure Coast, which means, except for the things that you don't specialize in, it's just jet airplanes and I don't yachts. do jets. I don't do the big yachts. Not that I couldn't. Right. I mean, uh, it would be like with Greg. You know, Greg can practice all kinds of law. Right. There's nothing that says, oh, you can only do this. But he has a couple things that he shies away from and, and gives it to someone who specializes in There that. you go. Right. Right. And I, I do mean, the same yeah, thing. It's, it's just difficult. Of I course. mean, it's, it's difficult I don't want a to client try to, to pay me to train me. There you, you go. Right. So I'd much rather say, no, here's where you need to go. I'll call the guy, and we'll go out, he'll take me out to lunch one day, and we'll be right. square. Right. It's better to be very knowledgeable in, in one and, or two areas absolutely. than, well, than and that, and, and trying to be trained on the job. In defense of Greg, um, and in fact, way, way, way back, when I used to have a client that needed a will or a trust, I would find the nearest attorney, and I'd go talk to the guy, interview, and he was real nice to me, and then I'd take my client in there with him, and then all of a sudden he became arrogant and pretentious and intimidated the devil out of my client, and then then he overcharged him in my 
not too humble opinion again and I got sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. Now I'm stuck and the client's stuck and I can't say a word because supposedly I helped this client. Well, <laughs> then, yeah, the word supposedly, right, Greg? Then well, about 20 I mean, years ago or thereabouts or maybe longer, I met Greg and all of a sudden, Greg Fasula listened. Well, Joe, I, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the physician who people say he has great bedside manner. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it's yeah. the same thing in all of our professions. Right. You have people who take the time to listen and understand, gets right. along with their clients, tries to speak at, at, a, at a level where right. everybody understands what's going on. Now, let's face it, if I'm talking to another professional, I may use a different jargon mm -hmm, than right. if I'm talking to someone who just walked in as, as a client. Right. That's respect to that person, and you owe them that. Right. That doesn't mean that yeah. I'm not good. It just means I'm trying to get you to understand what we're talking about. That's what about. you mean by the bedside manner. Absolutely. Right? It's just the, the ability to be able to communicate Absolutely. With now, person. you do have some doctors with great bedside manner who put you in the grave. Boy. <laughs> okay, and you could have, so in addition to that, I always tell you, Joe, I level. look for confidence and I look for those things also. Right. I know my mother went to a doctor that, I mean, handsome devil, charismatic. My mom loved that guy because he was a handsome and charismatic. And he, mm -hmm. he had no memory, none. You'd walk in the door, just, just a quick story, just as when I talk about Dan's talking about competence. So my mother's in the hospital, and she's literally dying of lung cancer. She's going to die. She opted not to go through chemo and radiation, so she's going to cash out within a short time. Mm -hmm. So on her bedside table, she's got meds. So she's got Lipitor. And I said, Ma, why are you taking Lipitor? And I knew the answer. She said it's for my cholesterol. My cholesterol. <laughs> and I said, Mom, I hate to tell you, but you're dying of lung cancer. You don't need to take that anymore. She goes, yeah, I do. I right. said, why? Because my doctor said I have mm -hmm. to. Really? Nurse comes in. I said the same thing to the nurse. Nurse says, yeah, you really don't need to take that. Mom says, yeah, I do. But it's on the list. It's on the list. Doctor comes yeah. in. He's got his chart, got his f file. I said, and now being the sweet, gentle person that I am, I said, why do you have my mother on Lipitor? So he opened up his file, and he looks at it, and he says, this is for her cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you'd like to have this guy as a next door neighbor, but you'd be afraid to send your dog to him. That's right. Yeah. Well, anyway, he then advised my mother that she didn't need it to take that anymore. It wasn't necessary. Well, that, you know, that. they see so many people. Now that you mentioned it, <laughs> <let's> see. <laughs> they see so many people. How could they? How could they remember what everybody's taking? Well, I didn't what say that they couldn't. But they, they, just, they but, have to. But be they need that. to look at the chart before yeah. they come in the room. Right. And I not know only they should, that, yeah. what you need is exactly what you were, Joe. You were your mom's advocate. Yeah, absolutely. Just like I'm the advocate for my kids or little. Of course. And you have, if you go in there so naive that you know nothing about anything, you do whatever you're told, but you owe it to your life to be a little bit educated about yourself. Well, there's my thing, and I've done this re religiously with different people that are friends or buds or enemies even. They are on 10 or 15 different drugs. And I said, hey, write them all down for me. Let me run them through the computer to see if there's some. Well, invariably, it'll say if you take this one, don't, don't take, take that, that one. one. Oh, well, really? And some oh, yeah. people go to multiple doctors, and they don't explain what they're taking. Mm -hmm. and, now, I tell mm -hmm. you, I'm just telling you, Joe, I have never been to a doctor's office that didn't say, I need to know every med you're on. Nowadays, they're really getting better. On I that. mean, for years. Mm -hmm. Well, let me just tell you, this has happened one, my mother was one, and I have another buddy of mine that died a couple of years ago at 76, and I went in and looked at his, and it literally said, if you're taking this one, this one could cause heart failure yes, yes. if you mix them. And mm -hmm. Well, my dad had that situation, and I didn't, you know, he was living with me, and, and as a, you know, busy guy, I really wasn't that involved with his meds. He right. had a nurse that came in every day, and I looked at her to make those good decisions. One day, my dad says, you know, I'm taking about 40 pills a day. Lord. I said, there's no way. He goes, look, son, I'm taking it. I couldn't believe it. I took him up to Watson Clinic in Lakeland. They're just a diagnostic center. And by the time we left, he was down to 15. There you go. Now, that was, yeah. you know, 40 years ago. Yeah. But I'm just telling you that you're right, Joe. It can happen. Yeah. And as a person, you should take a little bit of uh, – interest in what you take you know i'm sure a lot of times the doctors know that but it's sometimes it's like a balancing yes, act absolutely. where they where they have to determine is make it, a determined yeah it, it, taking these two well you know the you old know, they may not 
They may the old saying, the you know, doctors get to bury their mistakes. Well, yeah. Now I'll tell you this. I talked to a pharmacist. <laughs> Attorneys, that's why we're all in a practice. You that's see, we keep practice. practicing until we get it right. But I talked to a pharmacist, <laughs> and what he was telling me was if you have enough money, they can make, they can custom compound yeah, the yeah, drugs sure. for your DNA. Yeah, yeah. And what he suspects is, we may not live to see it, but he said, <clears> I believe <throat> at one point in time, your DNA will be on file. And the drugs that your doctor prescribes for you will be custom made for you so that big long list of things that are going to kill you won't exist. Trust me, your DNA will be on file and it won't because they're trying to give you the right medicine. Well, no. well that's what they say. Well, besides that, he'll have a chip in his head too, you know, so we'll know where you are. All I have no problem with that. 340 <laughs> I've always wanted to do that like Ancestry, but I, I'm kind of afraid to give my DNA to anybody. Yeah, well, you also you go in a database. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know it all go in a database. This is kind of scary. You know, you, you look Italian, Greg. I hate to but say But you may not be. <laughs> you may, you I, may, I don't know. It's, it's like the it's guy who does cool the, to uh, to know the German exactly. stuff and the, finds the guy out on the TV. He's I actually Scottish. Scottish. Right, right. Leader, leader Hosen to, from to kill. Romania to kill. or something. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. The poor guy. Well, I know that my, and then Dan and I are pretty good on one side of the family because he's got that strong Russian side. My dad's Polish and Russian, but my mother is Dutch at one side and hillbilly on the other, which is... That's, that's they, exactly what I got. They go so way... On that hillbilly side, I'm not sure what's in there. You don't know. And they <laughs> go, I saying. mean, they well, go way back. What's funny is we all got a little hillbilly. Well, hey. <laughs> and my grandmother was Harlan County, Kentucky. I mean, so she was coal But see, they're daughter. probably British. Mm -hmm. Well, you know well, what's the old saying? Kind of. The, the family <laughs> tree grows. The family tree goes straight up, and the gene pool is thin. <laughs> <laughs> All I know, we, I know we have American Indian in us, and I think we have other stuff. I mean, you can't have been around for four. Well, when you see that commercial, they give you the pie chart for the people, yeah, and they're yeah, so yeah. happy to find out. But there's mm -hmm. this big, gigantic 30, 33 percent where it says other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's I'm going to pay you to tell me what yeah. I am, and you're going to tell me other. Oh, that bothers me. Too. <laughs> That's that mongrel part. The of mongrel you. part, right? Right. Well, I know that they uh, they traced my grandmother. They got to 1650 back when they used to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't go back any further. There was just no, no records. records. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they 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 don't know how far. The best back. records for that when you get back that far are any military records because I was able to search our family back into the military. Revolutionary War. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety. So, Greg Fasula, attorney. Dan Warren, independent insurance agent. Joe Martek, financial advisor. Started doing these shows to help people. And quite honestly, we've been able to help a lot of people. And I don't think a week goes by, Greg, that you and I don't have somebody that uh, we have in common that has a question or something that comes up that oftentimes is not very difficult right? for, right. for, for us, <laughs> um, but can be really difficult for them. Or life-changing. How do we put this into writing and into paper properly to do the right thing? Right. I, I mean, when you see, when I see my, my clients, it, it looks a lot more difficult when, when, when to me, when I see it, and I and, and I'm doing this on a daily basis, it does, you know. To yeah. me, it's not a big deal. But it, but telling and explaining to the client what needs to be done, that that's what's important. Absolutely. Yeah, I have I have a regular. In fact, I met with a, a lady this week, and uh, she was looking primarily for you, um, a CPA, and me, um, and she had multiple situations that were problems and ton of money. But she inherited a lot of these things, which causes other problems. So it was just, it's just mm -hmm. very, it got a bit complicated because she ended up with three big file folders and binders of stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things that... They're not problems. They're options. Well, you know what happens is this. If you, if you have no money, that's a blessing and a curse. And if you have a lot of money, that's a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, either way, it, it causes problems. You don't mind? Listen, I do not mind paying my taxes and right. the things I owe to my society and the right. government. Right. I just don't want to pay more than I should. And, and unfortunately, I'm not educated enough in that. To, to make good decisions, I have to have someone to help me there you go. to do that. Well, that's not your expertise. Absolutely not. If, if you had that expertise, you wouldn't be an insurance that's agent. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> exactly. And, and you have to be a little bit of an expert in a lot of things to, to be successful. Yeah. But when it comes down to, like, you fill this out and put your name on it, Mr. CPA, yep. and yep. I'll follow you. There you go. Mm -hmm. Which leads us into the other members of the team, Ms. Victoria Lloyd, REMAX of Stewart. 
uh, when the real estate bubble burst and all hell cut loose all over the country and especially in Florida, it became critical to have an expert that knew what was going on with the new words like short sales and then deed backs and foreclosures. And, um, and, and this, this girl's only been in the business since 1978 or 80. For somebody 30 years old, it's kind of a miracle. That's pretty American. Yeah, but she knows every block in these two counties, which brings me to Mike Paulus, mortgage broker, because during the height of all of the recession, we kept hearing there was no mortgage money available, and that was never true. Um, the rules became the old rules, which, which you had to prove that you could afford to make the payment. Well, and that's not a bad <clears throat> No. Not at all. That was logical. But that won't stay long, Joe. Well, it's actually loosening up now. They have non-qualifying mortgages again. But there's, as, as Mike would say if he was here today, or that a lot of times, let's say a retiree might have a million dollars in the bank, but they may not have much of an income. Yeah. Well, but they're a great risk because, because they've done it. So they look at that person a little different than the normal qualifying regimen that used to be for a person with a job, how much money they have coming in, how much going out. Um, it, Speaking of jobs, yeah. they say jobs are really rebounding. I mean, as far as the unemployment's really kind of quite four, low. Four percent or better. That's pretty great. Gross domestic product. You wait, Greg, for mm -hmm. so long when it hits four percent this mm -hmm. year. What are you going to say? Yeah, well, when those numbers went down to what six, five, six percent when Obama was there, uh, Trump was saying, "Oh, oh those those aren't real numbers. Those are temporary. Now they're real numbers." All of a sudden, well, those, that's New York man. <laughs> well, you know, you, you have to use now the side. Real. You got to use the side of the argument that suits your purpose best. Of course, that's of course. what we all do. But they're also admitting that there is still mm. underemployment, and of that course. there are people who gave up, who mm. couldn't find a job, fell off of unemployment. It just ran out. Those people are still out there, and they know that they are. Well, we're hoping that the government sits, sets up programs that encourages them to get back into the workplace and off of federal assistance. Well, you've you've heard that whole thing that that if you're able-bodied kind of thing. Oh yeah, and yeah, that'll, well, be, that'll a, be the next you to draw. Able-bodied <laughs> is a is is a is a vague term. It's like. Uh, no fault insurance. That's a vague term. Another, yeah. It's hard to really have no fault insurance mm -hmm. the way it's been dec you know, decimated by the courts. It doesn't really exist. Someone's always at fault. Three four zero fifteen ninety. Three four zero fifteen ninety. So I guess we've talked enough politics for today. What do yeah. you think? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I always try to bring things to the table that I think were interesting. You know, as far as insurance, every once in a while. So one of the things that I like to bring out <clears> is. People that were foolishly paying a lot of money. <laughs> All right. So every once in a while, I have one of these really good examples. So I had a friend of mine, and like with most of my friends, I don't stick my card in their face every time I see him and try to bug him for their insurance. They all know what I do. So he finally called me. He goes, hey, I want you to look at this insurance for me. Tell me what you think. Well, he had like a little service truck to send guy out to help people who got broke down and stuff. He's paying $9,000 for this vehicle. Say what? Whoa. 9000 Insurance? In insurance. Oh a year? Goodness. A year. Ooh. All right. So I'm thinking, well, surely he must have something on here that's really special or some great coverage <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but I could find nothing. One vehicle? One vehicle. So we got it down to 2000 bucks. Did he give his, his driver wow. a raise? He should have gave me the raise. <laughs> should have given you. All right. So... What I'm trying to say is if, if you see something that just doesn't make sense, and this guy's been my friend for over 30 years. Every time he wrote that check, ouch. And I'm thinking, that you had know, to be... you probably have had this free set for probably 10 years. Wow. wow. And some people, they don't even know that they're yeah. paying. And like they don't. They don't. It. You know, and bill comes in, write a check, pay it. Yeah, bill comes exactly. in, write a check, pay it. As long as you got well, enough money Well, they believe that's the what it costs. Right. Well, right. you know, and I gave this story before. I had a neighbor like that. And I, I don't bother my neighbors about, hey, let me insure your house. Blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And the same thing, he finally came over and he goes, hey, take a look at this. And, and it was a greater savings than this seven grand. It mm -hmm. was 9000 we saved him. I said, take your wife on a cruise. Yeah. Don't tell her you saved the money and you'll be a hero. And that's what he did. Yeah. I mean, so... And, he, and I, kept, I was telling him, I go, didn't you realize when your rates went up and up and up that they were trying to tell you something? Well, you're, now, you're one agent, and you're telling us two stories. Imagine how many people are out there that well, they're, they're are paying. But people, see, what happens, people also think they have loyalty 
to a company. Mm-hmm. Hey, I've been with XYZ Insurance Company for 25 years. They're the greatest people on earth. What are you paying? So I don't care what I'm paying. Well, what if you could pay 2000 a year or less? With who? Well, then they. <laughs> but the thing is, they think that they're going to get something inferior if they don't pay a lot for it. It seems like it. But well, mm-hmm. you know, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Just like with cars, people were Chevy guys or Ford guys. Mm-hmm. So I understand what you're saying, Joe. Sure. But a lot of people who, who have moved down, let's say, from the Northeast, who had a, a carrier that doesn't ride in Florida, doesn't have a clue that the price they're getting is, like, way out of line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because many times what happens if you have – uh, a captive agent who has, let's say, two options to place your home, you only have a few places to go. Right. Whereas I have, you know, a, a huge amount of companies to, to look at, there's a good chance I could probably do better. Now, not always. I always got to throw that in, but most of the time I can. But, you know, people have that stuck in their head. I got to be with that company. I see them on TV every day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can, I can tell you without any doubt, the most successful the most profitable insurance companies with the most money you've never heard of because they don't advertise Mm -hmm. all right and they're from london right right. what happens is in 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 the business and and dan's my insurance agent but i shop at every Dan's my insurance agent too i shop at every six (laughs) months i call guy go up and they say better stay with dan (laughs) (laughs) i called a barbie i talked to barbie there and barbie says joe please Please, don't have any more tickets for accidents, please. (laughs) But, you know, every once in a while, I'll have a client who said, hey, I got this great price. And I go, well, bring it, let me look. And I go, that is a great price. And then I'll I'll talk to my office manager and I'll say, that company beat us. I need them. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. But you know what they do, though, Dan? Because I did that for a long time. Every time my renewal would come, I'd shop. And the new guy would have a better price. Then when their new renewal would come, it would go up. And then I'd go back to the first guy, and then he'd yeah. give me a deal. It's like they're hey, buying your crazy? business well, for one buy, and one they year, do yeah. buy business. They policy do term. They do that. But I he, have companies that do that. Don't kid yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because right. a lot of people won't cl- you know, change after that mm-hmm. one year. Well, that's exactly. well, the minute, oh, that's my, minute my minute my premium more, goes up, I'm looking. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. what we do, if it goes up over a certain percentage, our computer is set up where it kicks it out. Okay. And my girls reshop it right. automatically. Automatically, yeah. And then, hey, whether their computer does it or not, I call them up and say, "Reshop me." <laughs> it's done. Here's the new price. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Are those tickets because off my you know record what? yet? If you don't, somebody else will. Well, there's yeah. the key. You know, life is competitive. There's no such thing as one attorney that gets all the business, one insurance agent, or Absolutely one financial not. advisor. There's there's a ton of us out there. And who does the best job for people? Well, the ones that work the hardest, that, that take it more conscientiously, that tell the truth, that have integrity and competence. And I, I think when I talk about our group, the, the biggest single word that, that I come back to is integrity. Um, you know, competence is critical. Yeah, we like that. We're nice people. We're good guys. But boy, oh boy, you know, how many people do we see come and go in life uh, that are here and gone six months, a year, or two or three years later? You know, when you're 30 some years or 25 or whatever the years that are that we are all, all have been here, that, that counts points to me. Mm-hmm. And I look at my clients. I was with a, a, a re, not a retired, but a, a, a minister, a pastor of a church today. And here, here was an interesting thing, Dan. And boy, I had a real hard time with this. Um, they had a church retirement program, and it's like an IRA or 401k, never been taxed. And according to the church, they say, this retirement plan, you now have to take your RMD, required minimum distribution, because you're over 70. But you now can write off a portion of your house as a business expense um, because you are a pastor. And that's normal that pastors have work out of the rectory or work out of their house. And this is normal from a tax deduction standpoint. And I said, you know, and I don't care what church it is, which minister you are, you counsel people, you have people come into your house, you might keep files in your house, any business. Absolutely. Any right. business. So your church is not necessarily an office. That's, that's where you preach and do whatever, but you don't oftentimes have an office in that church. So they come up and they say, hey, this is normal. You take normal deductions. And our program is set up for that. And I said to him, I says, you know, I'm having a problem with that because 
Working out of your home as a business, every company that does that gets to have a tax deduction. We take a portion of the house, say 20%, as business expense because we operate out of our house. And you don't have to be a pastor. You could be a salesman selling something. You could be an insurance agent. All kinds of different people work out of their houses, and that's their home office. So I don't think that this retirement plan has totally told you the whole 100% truth because you'd get that deduction because of the IRS code. It isn't because of the church code. No. Mm -hmm. But she said to him, hey, as long as you keep your credentials where you are a practicing right. pastor, mm -hmm. whether it's an assistant or whatever, you now qualify probably under the code, the really? tax code. Greg, think about you. If you didn't yeah. have an office but you worked out of your house yeah. as an attorney, a lot of attorneys mm -hmm. do. There, there are some that do. You take a portion. But then they, they, their office is in their house. Yeah. But let me ask but I, you this. I do work in my house, right. but my office is not my house. No. It's, it's, it's much more difficult when you do work from your house and you have an office that to justify your office, two offices, let's say. Now, many attorneys have multiple offices. Yeah. Different towns, different yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah, well, that's pretty, that's pretty simple. Yeah. But I don't know anybody in all three of us or anybody that's a professional that doesn't do work from home. Now, I, I could be wrong here, Joe, but I have heard rumors that when you have, when you take that write off as an in home office, right. it, it sort of flags you for an audit. Of course. So for me, even though I work out of my office, I, at Your my house, I don't ever declare. Well, don't Isn't either. there some sort of the depreciation aggravation. too? Depreciation against your house if you well, use it as a you take your utilities and your I don't want to get too fancy. I just want my accountant to get me in and get me out and <laughs> the pay key, and go. The, the key <laughs> is this: there are certain industries that I'm sure where they're not as flagged as much as others. Um, because I work out of my home with doing we all, stuff we all do. with my computer every day. Every day. I so mean, you're saying because it's a, it's a church. The church not probably be flagged has an easier route because if you're a pastor, um, that mm -hmm. the IRS code might not look as difficultly if you take a portion of your house. And, and let's face it, Joe, when we first started in business, all of us, the computers were not as they were today. No, so no. The chances of you doing everything that you do at your office, at your home, might have been frowned upon. Today, there's nothing I can't do at my house right, right. that I would do at my office right. because of my computer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I, I, there, every day of the week, and I don't know if it's the same with you, probably is, I'm on a computer for two hours every morning. It's going through emails and stuff that are coming. I do it at before. night. I do it in the morning. I'm not a good night person. But anyway. Three four zero fifteen ninety three four zero fifteen ninety. Anybody? Hey, we got three reasonably intelligent people here. Two out of three, anyway. You can, yeah, <laughs> dead air after that. <laughs> yeah. Two out of three. Plus, we have a producer who's. We, we can actually say she's probably smarter than all the rest of us combined. Absolutely. Oh, listen to this. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to get, but it's I something. Don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it sounded good, though, Joe. Thank sounded, you. It sounded good. <laughs> Thank you. And she's only been doing this for how many years? As long as we've been here, you've been here. Broadcasting? No, I've been with, a broad with us. I, well, I've been with Greg and Carol for 17 years. Wow. I've been in broadcasting for 35 and you're not that old. No, I'm 32. I noticed. Just like just like Victoria. <laughs> you and Victoria <laughs> yeah. know it all. 30 and holding. 340-1590, 340-1590. Another subject that I just want to talk money for a couple minutes. Um, the market's hotter than a pistol. Does the, that scare you a little, Joe? No kidding. You and I have been scared now for two years. Oh, yeah. And by everybody's estimation, the market is at least full. But what happens is... The stock market normally works six months to a year in advance. It projects what's going to happen or what they think is going to happen. So people buy stocks or mutual funds or whatever because the perception is things will continue to get better. And another thing that happens quite often, when everybody is happy because the market's going up, then the people that were reluctant to get in, they get in too, which oftentimes is too, too late. late. Yeah. Oftentimes too late. In fact, I think it was Warren Buffett that said, the best time to buy is when everybody's discouraged and the best time to sell is when everybody's happy. It's just, just kind of the reverse of what most people think. Right. Well, you have people that make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who say, what happened? What happened? <laughs> I don't want to be one of those yeah. people. Yeah. So is, the other couldn't side you, though, I mean, is there a way to, to, to like join this you know, uptick in the market now if you... <laughs> 
if you buy carefully? I mean, would Absolutely. you buy things that are more affordable? Well, well here, Joe, let in me hopes just jump that they in. would go up too. Let me too? tell you personally, I've missed a great opportunity in this last ten thousand point run up because I jumped out totally mm -hmm. when it was at a much lower rate, and I said to myself, when it hits fifteen. On the down tick, I'm jumping back in at 100. Okay. percent <laughs> Okay. Well, it, it was almost there. Oh, and then it went. And then it started going <laughs> oh, up, up, and it never stopped. Oh. And I watched it go by. Mm -hmm. Well, most of us, most of us expect. Most of us, and I talk to other members of my peer group, guys that have been in the business longer than me, that have bigger books. No different than you, Dan, with the insurance industry. You share with other people that you know. And most of us believe that this is going to be a good year. Maybe not as good as last year, but it'll be a good year because the economy's on a good momentum and tax reform is going to help it. But no such thing as forever. Mm -hmm. In fact, this week um, we will surpass the longest running bull market with no correction ever. 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 Okay, so now when the I talk. The bull is awesome. So now I talk to clients of mine. Okay, fine. You were up 25 and 30 percent for the last 12 months. Joe, I'm scared. I am scared to death I'm going to lose that. Well, guess what? There are vehicles out there that say, fine, we will put guarantees in place to protect you. Um, and I call it an insured investment. Now, we have to know which insurance company we're dealing with. Um, but literally, I've got clients that in the last 12 months are up 25 and 30 percent. But what happens is in the contracts that we've got, they say, fine, we're going to guarantee you an income for life on that high watermark, and we're going to have a death benefit that protects that money um, in case you die on the wrong day. If the market was up to, say, 200 and all of a sudden it went down to 100, but that contract might guarantee your family that 200,000. So there are some benefits, especially strong right now for people that are scared but hate to miss it, like Dan missed it. A lot of people have missed it, and they don't want to continue to miss it, and euphoria is upon us. Is this the right time? Well, I'm leaning heavily, heavily on insured because if I start putting people into other things, we look at P.E. ratios that are 25, 30, 35, which 10 is good, and now all of a sudden they're up there, hmm. but they're still going like crazy. because it's, it's hard to call. It's hard to call. Anyway. Anybody needs to get information on that, you call 340-1590, 340-1590. Glad to get your information. Remember, we got Greg Fasula, attorney, Dan Warren, independent insurance agent, Joe Martek, financial advisor, Ms. Victoria Lloyd, Remax of Stewart, Mike Paulus, mortgage broker. We're here to help answer questions, make your life better any way we can. And I think we're winding down. Are we out of time? We should say goodbye. Bye, folks. Goodbye. <laughs> listening to the Team Martech Hour. The Team Martech Hour is a paid program. The content was provided by the advertiser. WPSL, its staff, management, and ownership were not responsible for its content. Investment involves risk. Prior to making any investment, an investor should meet suitability requirements. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Neither the opinions expressed nor the information provided constitutes a recommendation to purchase or provide investment advice. The material presented is not a substitute for obtaining professional advice from a qualified person or firm. Securities offered through Centaurus Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Tune in again next Wednesday at 1105 for the Team Martech Hour here on WPSL 1590. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast.